Ellen and I are at the Pines Lake Resort here in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, but this week it's going to be about me being wrong in the last video and the internet letting me know about it. Part two of Wheels, Worries, and Weights coming up. Stick around. This is going to be a nerdy one. All right, welcome back. So, in the last video I did about the wheel, I got uh, called out on a couple of mistakes I made. One of them was that the wheel that I listed or mentioned, which was the Tiger wheel on the Lion's Head site, it is not actually that wheel. That wheel, someone noticed that that had six sets of spokes where the one that I have on my RV has four. So correction on that. So that concern I had about the weight, which was I think 3960, turns out that I have the Harrier wheel and that is rated at 6,005, so we are good there. So since I put that new wheel on, I've gone about 550 miles and all is good. I ran the tire pressure just a little bit lower because someone else pointed out in the comments that the um, 140 seemed a little high and the tires were hard. So I did some research and it turns out that 123 PSI, which is the max inflation cold pressure, is basically the pressure that you should run around and it only should go between 5 and 7 PSI higher than that. I'm still doing some research on that so I'm sure there are a lot of different varying opinions on that but I'm going to run it that way for a while see how it goes. And I'm probably going to make some plans on upgrading the wheels at the very least because I, now I'm not so sure about the quality. So let's see what else I'm going to do. I'm going to show you my weights and some other math that I'm doing to figure out the real ratings and the uh, capacities of our RV in our truck. I went to Way Station about a month ago before the latest wheel issue and I've got some weights there. I'm going to do some comparisons and show you how I'm figuring out the weights and what I want to do about wheels. So stick around, it's going to be a spreadsheet, um, all my nerdy stuff. So, uh, you know, stick around and we'll see if you like it. All right, let's get into the weeds. First, a disclaimer. So this is just the method that I have used to calculate the uh, payload capacities and whether or not we are overweight uh, on our trailer. Um, I'm basing it off of facts and data that I got from the manufacturers of the various uh, components, so that the axles, wheels, tires, etc. Um, I encourage you to do your own research, and I have to say that this is for entertainment value only. You should not use this as the sole um, methodology of you figuring out your own situation. Um, I'll get into how I did mine. You can take whatever you want from that and use it for yourself. Um, let's see, so this is a follow-up to the video that we did a couple of weeks ago where we uh, talked about the wheel failure we had. The question came up, were we overloaded? Um, when Ellen and I first went out looking for an RV, uh, we knew we needed to get a truck and I did do all the math and calculations back then so we know we have the right truck for the RV but of course over time you add things to the truck and you add cargo to the RV so it's good to check your weights and make sure that you're still within the guidelines um, going forward and that's what this is all about here so let me get into it it is going to be a little bit in the weeds um, but I hope I make it clear enough so you can understand it uh, I'm going to go fairly quick but of course if you have any questions comments you can always put those down in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them all right let's get going all right so first we're going to go through the ratings of the truck there are two ways you can get the ratings of the truck you can either check with the manufacturer they have a towing guide I'll show you that in a minute and a lot of the information you can also get off the uh, sticker inside the driver's side door so the steer axle is rated on the truck at 6,000 pounds the drive axle is rated at 9750 the trailer is at 16,000 because it has two 8,000 pound uh, rated axles the truck's gross combined weight rating is 43,000. If you don't know what that means, that means the, it means the most that the truck and the RV can weigh together, fully loaded with all its cargo. That's the maximum that it can weigh to be safe. Um, the truck's uh, gross vehicle weight rating is 14,000 pounds. What that means is that's the most the truck can weigh with or without the trailer. Can't weigh any more than that, meaning it can't have the weight between its um, steer axle and drive axle cannot be more than 14,000 pounds. So that means the truck, 
all its cargo, fuel, etc., and then the weight of the uh, pin weight, whatever you're putting on there, can exceed 14,000 pounds. So the base weight of the truck from the Mopar guide in a standard trim configuration is 8420. Uh, the truck's payload from the Mopar standard trim documentation is 5580. But my truck had some options, the navigation system, uh, cameras, all that kind of stuff. Um, so its payload is 5118. So I lost 462 uh, pounds of payload um, or cargo capacity to these options. All right, so the wheel rating um, from the manufacturer, they report the wheels is rated as 6,050 pounds each. Uh, the tire rating single loaded from the side of the tire is 58.05. And now for the fifth wheel, we have its gross vehicle weight rating from the label as well as the uh, manufacturer's brochure. It's a Riverstone 39 RKFB 2022. Um, it's 19,084. The brochure also says that the uh, trailer weight is 16,292. So subtracting the gross, um, the weight from the gross vehicle weight gives you the payload of 2,792. However, on the door of my RV, it shows that it weighs 17,943 pounds, 17,943 pounds. So you subtract that from the uh, gross vehicle weight and it gives you a payload actual payload of 1141 calculated however on the front sticker of the rv um, again up on the front driver's side it um, has 1082 so there's a 59 pound difference now that's not material here really uh, but what's interesting is our friends the joneses have the same make and model and year uh, rv as we do and their calculations work out to that same 59 pound difference. So it's curious why that is. I think it's either the battery or maybe even the paint or the spare tire. Again, not material here, just an interesting little thing. All right, so now we have to figure out if we're overloaded. So how do you do that? Well, the easiest way is to go to a CAT scale at one of the truck stops and weigh it. So let me tell you what my methodology was. So we um, headed out on the road and we went to a truck stop. We've got the trailer loaded onto the truck and I filled up with fuel. I have a OEM tank, of course, for 32 gallons, and then I have a um, auxiliary tank that takes another 38 gallons. So I filled that, those both up. Um, I got everything I need in the trailer, got everything I need in the truck, and I brought that over to the CAT scale, and we weighed it. And I'll show you the uh, weigh slip from that. Then we went finally to our destination. I unloaded the trailer. The next day, I took the truck. I went back to a truck stop. I fueled it up again all the way, just as I did the day before. So it's in the same state um, in terms of weight uh, of the truck itself. And I put that up on the scale and weighed it itself. And then I do some calculations to figure out what the weight of the trailer is. And I'm going to show you all that. So first, let me show you um, well, let me jump back a little bit and I'll show you the, uh, where I got all these ratings for the truck. There is a guide from Mopar. Um, here it is over here. And um, they just list out all of the various configurations of the truck. I'll go down here and find mine. I know that I have a, a crew cab, a 3500 4x4 crew cab, standard trim, 8-foot box. That's bef their most... Uh, standard configuration of a truck before it adds all the options navigation as i pointed out i have the 410 gear ratio and you'll you can see all these numbers here match up to what i put on the spreadsheet all right all right so let me go back to the spreadsheet and talk about we went out and we weighed the truck and the rv together and here's what we got well combined rv and the truck on the steer axle we had 5380 on the drive axle, 8260. You can see both of those are below the rating, so we're good there. The trailer axle was 16,420, so 420 pounds overweight there. Um, now we add up all of these, and it comes up to the 30,060, so that's the uh, combined weight of both um, the RV and the truck together. Um, we know that the weight rating is 43,000 um, under that. Um, and then the truck's uh, combined weight on its steer axle and its drive axle with the pin weight on is 13,640, which again is under the gross vehicle weight rating of the truck, 14,000. And of course, 
Then I went back and I weighed the truck by itself and the steer axle is 5300 and the drive axle is 4240 for a total of 9450. So obviously I'm within spec on everything there. Let me show you the waist, strip, uh, waist slips just so you can uh, see what I got here and see how I got the numbers. So there it is, steer axle 5380, 8260, uh, 16420 on the trailer, and then the gross weight there. And then here is the truck by itself the next day, 53, uh, 4240 for a total of 9540. All right, cool. All right, let's go back to the spreadsheet. Going really fast here because I don't want to bore people. All right, so here is what we figured out. So doing some math. Uh, the truck, as I weighed it, was uh, 95.40. So that means I actually had a payload remaining on the truck by itself with all my options and all my other stuff. I got tools and I break that down here. Okay, the, I add an auxiliary uh, fuel tank, which was 95 pounds. I had 38 pounds of, uh, 38 gallons of fuel in it, which works out to about 270 pounds. I have a cargo cover I added, and then side steps I added, and then I have my tool and tools and inventory. So about 658 pounds. Um, I estimated the inventory just to get the numbers right, but it, that seems reasonable to me. All right, so after doing all of this, um, it, I calculated out, so we're actually taking about 4,100 pounds in pin weight and putting it onto that drive axle, meaning when I'm all loaded up, all fueled up, got the truck and the RV connected, I have an additional 360 pounds of payload available in the truck. So that's me, the dogs, and a little bit of extra stuff, maybe. Um, that's it. That's all I have left. But I'm still under on all the specs except for those trailer axles. I'm 420 pounds over. All right, so let's go over here. Calculated trailer weight. Let's, how much does that trailer actually weigh? Well, I know that the combined weight was 30,060. The truck only weight was 9540. So stands to reason you subtract the 9540 uh, from the 30,060, and that's going to give me what the trailer is at. 20,500 in 20,520 pounds. All right, well, that is over the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer of 19,084. So we're over there. But are we really and does it matter? Because when the trailer is sitting by itself, it's on the, its jacks. So the axles and the uh, wheels and all of that are not taking all the weight. A lot of the weight is on the um, still on the frame. So it's not on the axles, right? It's coming down on the leveling jacks. All right. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, doing the math, uh, where we had the trailer at 20,520 pounds, uh, we were putting 4,100 pounds on the pin. Well, that works out to about 20%, which if you're out there a lot and you're looking around, you hear everybody say it takes about 15 to 20% of the weight of the trailer transfers to the pin. Well, there you go. All right, so let's see. Here, the, uh, we'll talk about how I'm loading up on those axles. Again, uh, the trailer alone, we're putting um, about 5,130 pounds on the wheels and the tires when it's sitting there by itself. That's under both the wheel rating and the tire rating. Now, the trailer hitched, um, we're over on the axles at 420 pounds, but per wheel, 4,105 pounds. Again, we're under on the wheel rating. We're under on the tire rating. So my conclusion there is that we are not overweighted on the wheels or the tires. So this 420, okay, which is overweight. There's no, I mean, okay, we're over the rating of the axles. There's no doubt about that. But it's, we're not over on the wheel rating. So I don't think the, this overweight contributed to the failure of the wheels. So all I can say is that it's got something to do with the quality of the wheel. Um, I, I don't know what else, how else to come to any other conclusion on that. Um, so 
now we so if we break this down and we say okay well we're 420 over on those axles on the trailer we break that down divided by four because there are four wheels we're 105 pounds over per wheel according to the axle rating not the wheel and the tire um, so 105 pounds per is that really significant to cause any problems well i don't know there's this kind of de facto standard out there. People say that you can go 10% over on everything. Well, okay, well, that's well below 10% over, uh, but still, it's over. And I don't know who is going to complain about that. Um, so, um, what can we do to address that? Well, Oh, one thing, let's think about it. The wheels weigh something. The wheels and the tires weigh something. I don't know that they weigh 105 pounds. I think they probably weigh, I think I saw the tire weighs about 35 and the wheel weighs about 38. So uh, call that 75 pounds per wheel. Well, if we subtract that from the 105, now we're only 30 pounds over per wheel because the wheel and the tire don't contribute to load on the axle. Okay, it's completely unsprung weight. Um, so, in my opinion, those, I'm not over. Uh, well, if I am over, I'm only over by 30 pounds per wheel. Right? Because really, the, the weight is all resting on the wheels and the tires. And we're not pushing those past their limit. Okay? So, that's what I've come up to. So, now, how do we solve it? Well... Um, we've got some stuff I can get rid of, right? I've got, um, uh, well, interestingly, I have AGM batteries. I have four AGM batteries, which weigh about 60 pounds each. So that's 240 pounds. Um, I could switch those out to lithium ion, save, um, you know, 50% of the weight there. I could reduce the number of batteries too. I don't need four. Um, Let's see, what else could I do? I could take some of the stuff that we have for cargo and shift it up into the truck so long as I don't go over that 360 um, pounds of additional pay, uh, payload capacity up in the truck. Um, and I could probably shift some things around in the RV as well, move those up front, get it the weight more towards the pin and away from the axles. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do some of that stuff um, here while we're in Maine. We're going to do that. And then when I head out, I'll go get fueled up and I'm going to weigh again. And then when I get to the other side, um, I'll weigh the truck alone. So I'll get two more weights done and I'll do the analysis yet again. So what's the end result of all this? Well, okay. I'm going to say that I think we got a quality issue with the wheels. Um, somebody pointed out that they ask interestingly, say, um, you typically back into sites um, on the non -driver, on the um, driver's side, right? So that means that I'm cutting and I'm looking out my driver's side mirror to line up, which means that the wheels on the driver's side are taking a lot of torque when that trailer is turning. Well, it just so happens that those are the two wheels that failed. Um, and that's how I usually back in. So maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure I've got some friends somewhere that are uh, finite element analysis guys that could do the math on that, uh, do the modeling and the math. I ain't that guy. Um, took the math, but ain't good at it. And I don't have the software to do it anyhow. But um, yeah, maybe that, that seems plausible to me. Eh. But, you know, whatever. So the end result here is we are going to um, switch out the wheels. We're going to go to bore wheels. Um, we'll talk more about that in another video. And while I'm taking the wheels off, uh, seeing as we've got 14,000 miles on the RV now, uh, I'm going to inspect the bearings, repack the bearings, lube the uh, suspension, do all that other kind of maintenance as I'm taking that stuff off and I have the RV uh, up on jacks. All right. I think um, I covered everything I need to cover here. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, I went through it really fast, but again, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. Uh, also, if you'd like, um, 
uh, I have a link down below where you can sign up for our newsletter. A couple of things that'll do for you is um, if you want a copy of this spreadsheet so you can work on it yourself, I'll do one for uh, Google Sheets as well as Excel. It takes me a little bit of time to get that ready. But if you want that, you can go and you know, give me your email address. I won't spam you. Uh, you'll just register, out, answer a couple of questions. And when that's available, I'll email you, let you know where you can download it. Um, and what else? Oh, I'm also working on two RV, uh, two apps for the RV industry that you may be interested in. I can't talk about a lot about those right now, but if you want to um, learn about those and uh, follow the progress of those and, and maybe even get involved somehow, um, you can uh, leave your email address at that link that I have down below in the description as well. Well, there you go. A lot of talking, talked really fast. Uh, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. If you get um, some value from this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. If you think anybody else will get value from this content, please share it out to them. And of course, again, please leave your questions and comments down below. Try to be factual if you're trying to um, go up against this data I presented here. Um, speculation and guesses and uh, wishful thinking isn't helpful to anybody. Um, so put those comments, put meaningful comments to help the community. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Thank you.